Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about synthetic fuels and so synthetic fuels are currently being talked about as potentially the savior for combustion engines, keeping internal combustion engines alive. So can synthetic fuels do that? And the science is actually pretty promising and I think there are applications where synthetic fuels make sense. Uh, however, there is a pretty big problem when it comes to passenger cars. So I'm quite skeptical that we'll see large-scale adoption of synthetic fuels uh, as it relates to the use in passenger cars and so I'm going to explain why in this video. So let's start off with the basics. What is a synthetic fuel? So a synthetic fuel is a fuel that is created rather than pulling from an existing fuel source uh, like crude oil beneath the earth's surface. So in the example of crude oil what you're doing is you're taking hydrocarbons which are deep beneath the earth's surface and you're taking those hydrocarbons and then eventually you're putting them into the atmosphere and into the ocean. Uh, so when you burn gasoline, gasoline being comprised of hydrocarbons, uh, one example being octane, C8, H18. Well, as you burn that octane, you combine it with oxygen and then you emit CO2 and H2O, so carbon dioxide and water. And so you're adding that carbon, you're taking that carbon from beneath the Earth's surface and then you're putting it above onto, you know, into the atmosphere and into the oceans. So there's a problem there with adding that carbon to the atmosphere and acidifying the ocean. And so instead of doing that, synthetic fuels say, well, why don't we make a carbon neutral fuel? And so how do you make a carbon neutral fuel. Well, you take the CO2 that already exists in the atmosphere, you take some hydrogen that already exists above the Earth's surface, and you combine that in order to make hydrocarbons, in order to make that C whatever, H whatever, certain amount of carbons, certain amount of hydrogens. So you combine those two, and then since you're pulling carbon from above the Earth's surface, you're not changing that amount of carbon, that total carbon in the atmosphere, right? Because you're just taking from it and then putting it back through combustion. So it's carbon neutral. That's a good thing. Uh, the other problem is eventually, you know, you're going to run out of crude oil. So for two reasons, you really have to, at some point, find a different energy source for transportation. All right, so you might say, why bother with synthetic fuel? Why not just use renewable energy for everything? Well, there's a couple challenges. So for example, solar, uh, it's not always daytime, right? So you can't always get solar energy. At night, you can't get it. Uh, wind power, well, it's not always windy, right? So there are times when solar or wind may not be able to actually generate any energy. So the challenge there is you need somewhere to store the energy while you are creating it. So if during the day, you create plenty of energy, great, as long as you have somewhere to store it, it's not a problem. So you need energy storage uh, for, for mass power use, and then you also need energy storage at the vehicle level. Now, there are many different ways that you can store energy. You can put it in a battery, you can put it in water and store it in a water tower. You know, you've got that potential energy. You can store it as hydrogen. You can store it in a synthetic fuel. Uh, so why would you want to store energy as a synthetic fuel? Well, when you start to look at energy density, it starts to make sense why. So let's just start off with regular gasoline, E10, meaning 10% ethanol, which is what we use here in the United States. So gasoline in the United States has an energy density of about 12 kilowatt hours per kilogram. This will start to make sense as we fill out this chart. Uh, as far as by volume, about 9 kilowatt hours per liter. A synthetic fuel, you know, there's different kinds of synthetic fuels that you can make. Generally speaking, they're not going to be quite as energy dense uh, as gasoline, but you could make it that way if you wanted. But something along the lines of about 4 to 10 kilowatt hours per kilogram uh, by mass and then you know about four to nine kilowatt hours per liter and then hydrogen looking at hydrogen it has an energy density of 33 kilowatt hours per kilogram meaning tons of energy by weight unfortunately by volume just two kilowatt hours per liter meaning your tank has to be really big uh, for hydrogen vehicles whereas it doesn't have to be that big for gasoline or synthetic fuel vehicle uh, in order for it to travel a long distance and then lithium-ion batteries electric cars Here's where it really starts to make sense uh, why we're discussing this. Just 0.25 
kilowatt hours per kilogram. So really poor energy density in a lithium ion battery. Now they're very efficient, so we'll get into that later on, but really poor energy density uh, by mass and then by volume, about 0.7 kilowatt hours per liter. Now all of these are an ish, um, and this is certainly improving with time right here. The lithium ion batteries are getting better and battery storage is getting better. But as you can see, there's a really big difference. So for vehicles, uh, you know, like passenger cars, hydrogen and lithium ion can make sense. You don't need all that much uh, energy in order for these to go a good distance. Um, unfortunately for things like shipping, massive boats, for aviation planes, things like that, they need a lot of fuel and can't, uh, like a plane can't weigh all that much, right? So you're gonna wanna use things like a gasoline or a synthetic fuel. So that's an application where it might make good sense uh, to be carbon neutral and still have really good energy density. Okay, so synthetic fuels so far are sounding pretty good. So now let's start to get to the process of how that energy starts out uh, and eventually makes its way to the wheels, whether that's a battery electric vehicle, a fuel cell electric vehicle, meaning hydrogen, or an internal combustion engine. So in order to start this off for a synthetic fuel, it must be a renewable source. If you're making it from a non-renewable source, this is an entirely pointless exercise. The only reason a synthetic fuel makes sense is if that energy comes from a renewable source. So let's just say wind energy in this example. Now, it's worth pointing out that that's not necessarily true for electric cars. Electric cars can still be greener than combustion cars, even if they do come from fossil fuels or the majority of that energy comes from fossil fuels. So uh, a distinction worth pointing out. But let's start off with our battery electric vehicles. Uh, the energy we're saying comes from a renewable resource. So here we've got a little wind tower. Then you have to transmit that energy. Uh, eventually you're charging the battery of your electric car and then the battery is sending that power to its motor in order to move the vehicle. So there's an efficiency associated with this process. Now, if we're going to a fuel cell electric vehicle where we're gonna transmit that energy uh, in order to perform some electrolysis, and we're gonna use electrolysis to create hydrogen, we're gonna transport that hydrogen, uh, move it into the tank of a vehicle, the hydrogen tank of your motor vehicle. From the hydrogen tank, it goes to a fuel cell which converts it to electricity, and that electricity powers an electric motor which moves the vehicle. And then for a combustion vehicle, in this uh, synthetic example, you take that energy from your windmill, you transmit it, you create hydrogen using electrolysis, then you add to that carbon capture technology, so you're capturing uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and you're getting that carbon to use for your power to liquid process. So here, you're combining that hydrogen and that carbon and you're creating a liquid fuel. Complicated process, we're summarizing it here in just one step uh, to get through this and then we're transporting that synthetic fuel, we're putting it in a fuel tank, and then that fuel tank is going to power a combustion engine which will power your wheels. Now, as I mentioned previously, there's an efficiency to all of these steps, right? And so as you can see, an electric car, there's not many steps between creating that energy and putting it to the wheels. Hydrogen, there's a few more steps. And then with combustion engines, there's even more steps than hydrogen. So each time you do this, your efficiency drops. So what does it make the most sense to do? The shortest path possible, which is why electric cars make so much sense today. Okay, so the big question is, how much energy makes it to the wheels? So if we start off with our energy production and we have 100% of our energy, what percentage of that energy remains once we get to the wheels with these different options? So I found a study published in the Journal of Society of Automotive Engineers uh, in 2020 uh, analyzing this question and the results that they came up with for battery electric vehicles, the amount of energy that's going to make it to the wheels, about 40 to 70%. For a fuel cell uh, electric vehicle, a hydrogen powered vehicle, that number is about 23 to 33%. So as you can see, not very good in comparison to an electric car. This is a big reason why electric cars are more popular uh, than hydrogen vehicles. And then for power to liquid, so using that synthetic fuel, creating a synthetic fuel and then power powering a combustion engine and then getting that combustion engine to move along. How much of that energy makes it to the wheels? About six to 18%. This is really, really, really bad. This is a big problem right here. I found another study uh, which said for diesel, this number is about 7.7%. .7%. If you're making synthetic diesel fuel, the percentage of energy that actually makes it to the wheels, just 7.7%. .7%. So if we look at the best 
internal combustion engine at 18% versus the worst electric vehicle, we still need over two times the energy in order to you know, move that uh, combustion vehicle that same distance. If we're looking at internal combustion engines versus electric cars, the potential is as high as 10 times the amount of energy required, right? This is insane. So best case, you need two times as much energy to travel the same distance. Uh, you know, it could be as high as 10 times. So an electric car can travel so much further on the same amount of energy. And that's the big problem here with synthetic fuels. If we look at this diesel example from this uh, other study, that number is about seven times, seven times the energy required uh, versus a, an electric car. Um, so, so what are the implications of this? Uh, well, first of all, hydrogen actually makes sense as a long-term energy storage source. So one of the things that I found very interesting about this study that was looking at these percentages, it actually makes more sense to take that energy, convert it into hydrogen, take that hydrogen and use a fuel cell to then transport electricity to a battery to an electric car rather than using that hydrogen and then turning it into a synthetic fuel and then putting it in a combustion engine. It's actually more efficient to go all the way back to the start with this hydrogen and then go to a battery car than to take that hydrogen, combine it with CO2 and use it for a combustion car. That is crazy. So as a uh, energy storage solution, Hydrogen actually looks pretty smart. Now for certain applications like shipping, aviation, yeah, synthetic fuels make sense because they have the energy density. The problem is they're just going to be very expensive. So it's very expensive to do, hence why it isn't really done today. So let's look at an example to better understand the cost difference. So we're gonna compare an electric car versus this diesel vehicle, synthetic diesel. And so looking at the cost for one year of running an electric car, let's say we drive 15,000 miles a year per battery we get 300 miles, so we divide that, we multiply that by the size of our battery, divided by our charging efficiency, we're gonna use 83%, uh, multiply that by the cost of electricity, we're gonna say 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So that gives us the cost for driving that EV per year, 15,000 miles, is going to cost us $675. Now, we need about seven times the energy for a diesel, so if we multiply that number by seven, well, the cost is then $4,725 per year. So that's very expensive to run a vehicle like that. Uh, and then when you look at, you know, let's look at the lifetime. Let's say you have the vehicle for 10 years, $6,750 over 10 years in electricity versus $47,000 uh, in diesel fuel. You know, that's the price of the electric car right there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's basically like the car was free in this case if you're going electric versus diesel. The fuel is just way, way, way too expensive. Uh, and so if you kind of calculate this out and you're looking at, you know, what is the price per gallon in this example of diesel fuel, well, it's about $10 per gallon, uh, which is quite expensive. Um, and so that's gonna be you know, the prohibitive thing of why people aren't going to be using synthetic fuels and why it's not gonna be mass adopted. Um, another example, I was kind of doing a sanity check to say you know, how realistic is this $10 per gallon? Well, Porsche is one of the players in the synthetic fuel game, and in an interview with Haggerty, Porsche's CEO said their current cost of synthetic fuel was over $10 per liter. In other words, about $38 per gallon. That is insane. So the cost is just absolutely absurd. And I know someone's gonna comment, I know someone's gonna say, Jason, you know what, if it means I can keep driving my combustion car, I don't mind spending $40 a gallon. Here's the thing, that's like saying, I don't mind driving a Lamborghini to get places. It's like, that's great, but that's not realistic for everyone. Uh, so the cost of synthetic fuels is just so bonkers that for passenger cars, the energy requirement is so much more than electric cars that I don't see it making economic sense. Uh, Porsche says they'd like to get that cost down to you know about $2 per liter, but that's still in this $10 per gallon price range, right? And so it's just very, very expensive. That's the challenge here. Uh, the efficiency isn't there, the cost isn't there. If you're making electricity, it costs something to make electricity, right? You want it the shortest path, the easiest path to use that energy, uh, and that's what electric cars offer. So 
from a environmental standpoint, yes, it makes sense to do for like shipping and aviation. It's just very expensive for those industries if they were to do it. Uh, from a passenger car standpoint, I think it's going to be a bit cost prohibitive for mass adoption. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.